Hello, thank you for attending our virtual talk today on Model My Watershed, an easy to use web-based real-time water quality decision support tool. My name is Steve Skripnik. I'm a senior environmental engineer with Alumnotech, and I'm presenting on behalf of myself um, and Anthony Oftenkamp and Ren Lambert, my colleagues at Limnotech, along with several other collaborators that have uh, worked on this Model My Watershed tool uh, that we think uh, you'll find interesting. It's a new way to think about watershed modeling and stormwater modeling. Um, I realize you might be watching and listening um, to this on your own time, which is great. Uh, if you don't get to the end or get interrupted, I encourage you to check out the website on the top left, modelmywatershed.org, to jump right to the tool. Or if you want to go to it while I'm talking you through it, feel free to follow along. One of the perks of doing this while you're sitting at your own desk. So while I wish I were in a room with all of you, there are maybe some advantages to doing this uh, on your own time. So looking forward to talking about Model My Watershed with you all. I'm going to go over a few things today. Uh, the, the need for real-time watershed modeling, the components that we have right now to help us do real-time watershed modeling, where we hope this is heading in the future and where we see it heading, and what is the status of web-based real-time water quality modeling right now? So the need we've heard expressed challenges of water, uh, we've, we've heard challenges expressed to us uh, from water resource decision makers across the United States, and we've worked with some of them on, uh, a lot of them on modeling, and there's a need for real-time decisions to be made. And there's also a need to establish the requirements of decision support systems to meet those needs. So what do we mean when we talk about real-time decision support for watershed conservation? Um, as you all are very aware, I'm sure watershed conservation is complex. Um, uh, possibly uh, stormwater is possibly more complex than a lot of other different water related issues because of the variety of stakeholders that need to come together to really tackle a problem. Um, effective planning and implementation requires uh, decision makers to consider science, data, models, as well as stakeholder values because uh, stormwater touches uh, all sorts of people's lives and always have a, a large number of stakeholders involved in projects. And decisions are typically made by non-technical people like local government officials, conservation districts, nonprofit organizations. And it's really, if we can bring the decisions to those decision makers and uh, show the background of our modeling and the science in a way that's easy to use, free, accessible to all, provides rapid results, and is based on trusted data and models, that helps those decisions to be made in an intelligent way, backed up by data, and uh, and move forward in a timeline that that makes sense. And so we like to think of real time as just in time for decision makers. And real time decision support is also important for water risk. Uh, one way to think about this is water availability forecasting and the changing consumption, changing climate, considering environmental flow limits. Um, it's a very difficult thing to do water quality forecasting. You have to take into account uh, drinking water, inlets, source watershed protection, recreational use, community sustainability. Um, Another application is flood risk forecasting, which requires real-time data and high-performance computing modeling. And we've also seen the private sector getting involved in real-time decision support for water risk because investors are interested in understanding the risks of their investments, either in infrastructure projects across the United States or in, uh, in corporate projects. So, um, Real-time decision support is necessary to bring together all of these different factors in to, um, it, to come to conclusions about how to manage a water resource. So that last bit, that real-time decision support requires high-performance computing. Um, 
it's important to have scenario development and results in seconds. And we may be used to running watershed models that uh, need to be developed over years, you know, maybe are revisited every five years. Uh, and then when we revisit a watershed model like uh, HS. PF or SWIM or um, you know any other of a of a suite of watershed models that um, that it takes time to collect data it takes time to calibrate it it takes time to actually run the simulations and this this kind of flips it on its head that um, that we need a a a framework that has easy to use interfaces auto fetching of required data of meteorological data, uh, rainfall, wind, solar radiation, infiltration data, soil data, um, that very quickly does geospatial analysis of that data and, and models the runoff um, and provides visual comparisons of the scenarios. So the goal is to do that in, in a time frame of decision making, clicking a button and having it done. And this need need it to happen everywhere and any time in order to do an apples to apples comparisons across states and nations. So um, a lot of uh, water districts or utilities or states have their own ways of doing watershed modeling. And uh, there are methods that have been established over years and years of, um, of doing water resource work and stormwater work. But then when you attempt to compare um, compare model results across borders and across county lines and across different utilities, it becomes really difficult because there, uh, historically there really hasn't been much consistency in how models have been applied across these different jurisdictions. And this recognizes that um, maybe at the expense of individualized uh, calibration uh, in every single location that um, that there is a use there is a use for a model that is consistent from uh, one place to another um, and provides rapid results. Um, the other realization is that the solution to this is not supercomputing hardware. Uh, it's not feasible for um, for uh, all these utilities and um, and agencies to have a supercomputer sitting in their office or at a consultant's office. And so the, the solution here is uh, high powered computing through software engineering. And, um, and these are some of the tools that, that we've used for this application. Um, and it's generally an open source software stack. And that's important because it builds confidence and um, keeps it out of a black box for, um, for other developers to look at. So what are the existing technologies for the needed real-time decision support systems of the future? Um, the, th that's some background, but really today, this is about talking about one tool that we've developed that is starting to chip away at that real-time computing challenge. And that's uh, called Model My Watershed. Um, Model My Watershed Ha, is, a, is essentially a website that does automatic watershed delineation. It models runoff and water quality to find hot spots or uh, locations that really deserve attention. And it calculates and compares benefits of protection and restoration projects. So right within the Model My Watershed interface, you can change stormwater LID practices and in nearly immediately see differences in water quality loading, in nutrient loading, um, into the receiving water bodies, changes in, uh, in stream runoff, um, evapotranspiration, and other parameters uh, using the models that are built into the, the website. It's open sourced and expandable. So it has an API to integrate with other apps. So any other web developer can use any of the tools that are used in Model My Watershed um, using its API. It's modular with models for expansion. So currently it has two models built in, but other models could be built in in the future. And currently it's applied to the continental United States, but um, 
because it's open sourced and because it's modular, it the only thing that's keeping it there is the time it takes to apply it to to more locations. So who's using Model My Watershed? Well, it's a web app for conservation decision support. Um, it does automated watershed modeling, like I was talking about. Uh, the main long-term model that's that's um, that it supports right now is GWLFE, and it, the generalized watershed loading function model enhanced, and it quantifies the benefits of different conservation and climate scenarios. It has about 18,000 registered users, about 40,000 uses per month. Um, it's received several awards and it currently is the preferred tool by the state of Pennsylvania for doing TMDLs and MS4 permits. So while it may seem really easy to use um, and really fast, it that doesn't mean that it lacks the uh, the authority and the backup of recognized models and the uh, the power that it takes to, to have a model to support a TMDL or um, MS4 permits. So with all of that background, I wanted to actually run through a sample of the of using Model My Watershed. So um, if you go to modelmywatershed.org and uh, you'll see this page that's uh, that's the United States and you can just click get started. And um, it comes with a bunch of data built into it, all the data that you would typically use to develop a watershed model. So it has uh, the national land cover database. It has uh, the G Sergo soil, hydrologic soil group information, a 30 meter DEM of the United, entire United States. And so let's say you wanted to start delineating a watershed. And here is uh, the Napa River, just as an example, um, in California. And you can click on delineate a watershed and uh, drop the pin on a point that you want to delineate. And seconds later, you have a watershed delineation that's customized for that location. This isn't just hydrologic um, uh, hucks piece together for this location. This is uh, this is actually a watershed delineation based on the DEM and run in real time. And it, for most watersheds, it takes a few seconds to do this. And while it's doing this, the website is uh, downloading information from sources like the NL, uh, the National Land Cover data set, the GSERGO database, terrain, climate, and you can see all this information on the top left. So within seconds, you have enough watershed information where even if you weren't using this this uh, website to actually develop a model, you could download all of the information that it's pulled for you um, for whatever other application you might have. And I, I know Alimnotech and even some of our competitors and other consulting firms use this website just to uh, to get all of the raw data that they need for a specific watershed because within seconds you can have all of this downloaded in one place instead of searching around at different websites um, to get it and organize it in a, in a useful way. Um, so for instance, here's the land cover distribution. You can see the different percentages of uh, developed forest, scrub, crops, typical NLCD categories. And again, you could just click download and download this data. Um, then if you were to click the model button on the top, it, it runs the GWLFE model um, within again, within a few seconds for this whole watershed. And it, it's applied, it, it can be applied to watersheds into the tens of thousands of square kilometers. And so what you see here uh, is a stream flow estimate at the bottom of the watershed um, for an average of 30 years of, uh, uh, it, it runs a 30 year simulation. So uh, what you see here is the monthly average stream flow across that 30 year simulation. Um, and you can also look at water quality and change different parameters such as um, percentages of application and loading um, across different land cover types and compare results. So uh, you can compare 
a scenario where you've applied a certain conservation practice to uh, the baseline scenario and see differences in stream flow, differences in surface runoff, and also water quality. So right now with a, a GWLFE, uh, you can see differences in, in sediment loads, nitrogen loads, phosphorus loads. And this is just one, one example of uh, some of the many summary screens and, um, and information you can get out of this. Uh, once you have a simulation, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Quasi's HydroShare uh, platform, but um, you can, with a login to Model My Watershed, you can save different scenarios and then you can upload them to HydroShare uh, where you can share them publicly or share them privately with other users, which essentially is a way to have other users uh, see your model simulation and have uh, essentially everything that, that you're seeing on the screen available to them for them to pick up, modify, play with, and and upload to their site. So, um, so it's not just stuck on your computer. It's not just stuck on a hard drive. Um, and it's not just stuck in whatever result files you decide to export or turn into a PDF. It's uh, the whole goal of this is to have projects that are live, that are easily accessible, and that can be modified by um, by different parties to collaborate on coming to a solution to complex water quality problems. Um, and this also contains not just modeling resources, but, uh, but existing monitoring resources. So you can look at the watershed, like here's the, the Napa River in California, and uh, uh, quickly download USGS uh, stream data and any other uh, data that's been uploaded via HydroShare or Quasi's uh, WDC network and uh, other online databases. So instead of going to each one of those individually, it's all built into Model My Watershed. So um, for example, again, with our Napa Creek scenario, you could find this USGS gauge on the Napa River and it will um, quickly give you all of the data that's available for that location and you can plot it and you can download it from here or it's linked to the actual source data um, to make it easy to get to. So I, I thought I would take a risk here and actually do a live demo, we'll see how this goes, um, of, uh, of a small watershed in the Salt Lake area. Um, so Let's give this a try. So I have a Salt Lake City here um, in Northern Utah, and let's try the uh, little Cottonwood Canyon uh, River here. Da, da, da. So we'll say get started, delineate watershed. We're in the continental US, and just pick a point right here. And you're seeing this in real time. I'm not cheating, I swear. And um, and we have the watershed delineation and you could see it thinking there for a few more seconds as it got the stream order information. You can see land use, soil data. And you'll notice at the bottom, there's a download this data button if you, if you want any of, any of this data. Terrain, uh, climate, mean precipitation, mean temperature. Um, so uh, all sorts of information and, um, and for this, uh, simulation, I'll show you the uh, the site storm model. So this is a 24-hour storm that uses uh, SLAM TR55 and EPA's STEPL model, model algorithms. Um, so this is more of a design storm than the previous example that I showed. So click on that and nearly instantaneously you have a 24-hour design storm and you can use a slider here to change the assumptions of uh, the total precipitation depth over the design storm. So, um, so you can see that 2.5 centimeters of precipitation and the breakdown between infiltration, runoff, and evapotranspiration. And you can look at water quality estimates using the STEPL model of total suspended solids, total nitrogen, total phosphorus. Now where it gets really interesting is uh, let's zoom in here a little bit and again this is totally hypothetical but let's just say we wanted to uh, make some change to, to do a simulation of, of a possible um, 
uh, say land cover change. So we'll go to land cover and I'm really just showing this because it's kind of drastic and shows you very different model results. I don't think we're ever going to reforest um, half of this watershed, but um, let's just plop a forest in there to see what happens. So, um, so now if you go to compare, it takes a few seconds to think and you can see uh, three different scenarios here. Predominantly forested, uh, this would be sort of pristine, although forested is, is kind of a misnomer in, in Utah, um, versus current conditions and the scenario that I just created. And so you can see that runoff is decreased, uh, which is intuitive. If I add a forested area, um, infiltration has increased slightly. Um, and again, this is for a design storm of 2.5 centimeters. But if I were to increase that um, to a lot more, um, you can see the differences here, which aren't always linear. Um, but it recalculates that on the fly. So it's a uh, it's pretty quick and easy to use, and it also has results for water quality. So you can see the difference in TSS, TN, and TP loading from this watershed. So um, other than, cha than uh, changing land covers in different places, you can also um, add green roofs to an area or porous paving. So you can do this on the scale of the Napa River in California or on the scale of uh, uh, Little Cottonwood Creek or on the scale of a site or a neighborhood. Um, it, it, it applies at whatever scale the underlying model applies to and so TR55 is, is used for a, a pretty wide range of areas and the uh, G, GWLFE models use, typically used for larger watersheds but um, applicable in both cases. So. Uh, so I'll flip back over to my PowerPoint presentation here to wrap this up a little. Uh, both Model My Watershed and Monitor My Watershed are built on ODM2, which is the Observations Data Model version two. And um, it's a full implementation of the Open Geospatial Consortium Observations and Measurement Standard, which means that it is, uh, it is an approved standards driven um, data model. And it's designed to facilitate greater interoperability across scientific disciplines. So um, this is designed to store data in a way that is easy to access, is fast and um, makes, makes sense. Um, I'm sure we've all worked with hydrological data time series, uh, soil data, biodiversity data, and realize it doesn't always fit. Uh, it's a square peg that doesn't always fit into a round hole of existing uh, data frameworks. So ODM2 was built in order to support these um, very important data frameworks to our everyday work. Um, and it was based on the input from hundreds of um, of earth surface scientists, water resource experts. Um, and if you want more information on that, there's the link here to the GitHub ODM2 page. So other advancements that are going on right now is um, hopefully in the future, the integration of HSP squared into uh, Model My Watershed. Um, HSP squared is a Python implementation of the very uh, popular um, HSPF. HSPF is built on Fortran. Um, it's one of the most widely used and respected watershed models. Um, HSP2 is designed to completely replicate HSPF and is built on a modern software stack for cloud computing. So it's built on Python. It can run on any, um, on any machine and uh, because of that makes it very uh, um, very possible to run in the cloud. So um, that project's ongoing. If you're interested in that, there's the GitHub website um, to find out more information there or feel free to reach out. Um, there are many other resources that are being integrated into this real-time modeling and monitoring platform, including the National Water Model, um, the U.S. Geological Survey has many web services 
uh, the USGS Hydro Network Linked Data Index and uh, the EPA's Water Quality Data Portal, um, NASA's North American Land Data Assimilation Systems, and many other uh, data sources are 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 being incorporated in, into this. So where is this going? We think that uh, that this shows a lot of promise to be used in a in a lot of different locations and for a lot of different applications. Um, and just where we are right now is really exciting, but we, uh, uh, we're kind of a small part of this with a lot of other collaborators and funding partners that you see on the screen um, working toward this vision of, um, of high performance watershed modeling and, uh, and real time decision support. Um, where are we now? Um, Limnotech plans to open source its contributions to the software stack. And so, um, so I, I hope that the demonstration was interesting and that you can find some use for it at this point and uh, keep in touch with us and the project to see where it's going in the future um, because we, we just think it's going to be expanding and, um, and get more useful and interesting as we move forward. So thanks for listening. Um, again, my name is Steve Skripnik. My email is on the screen if you'd like to get in touch with me. Um, Anthony and Ren are also available um, if you'd like to send them a note. And I definitely encourage you to go to modelmywatershed.org and just play around and geek out a little bit uh, with some uh, really quick, easy, and fun watershed uh, modeling. Um, so thanks again for listening, and I hope you all have a great day. Thanks.